2001 Dodge Grand Caravan Sport 3.3 liter V6 radiator replacement. Have some Phillips screws along here, left to loosen, right to tighten. I'm going to take this shield off here and then take this metal piece out. I'm going to take some 10 millimeter bolts out as well. some freedom here. We can uh, weasel this out of here. This piece right here will weasel out. So as you saw I got the 13 millimeter bolts out of that. Excuse me, I took a screwdriver and uh, popped this out here, give me some slack, I got a, a rag, a few rags piled up on top of battery positive so you don't short it out, got that laid up there, certainly can lay it off to the side if you need to, might take some cooling fans out, here's the connector, push the tab over to the uh, left side and then you can uh, push this tab and uh, take it off. Disconnected this, just a 10 millimeter bolt right there. Just give me a little space when we uh, lift this out. And uh, I might take the radiator cooling fans out because I got it disconnected like I showed you. There's one over there too. We'll take these out and give us some access down below. But at some point maybe I want to let the coolant start flowing. Sometimes I like to disconnect the pet cock or the lower hose, let the coolant drain and let it drip out run out while I'm uh, doing stuff here on top so kind of a personal call I take the cooling fans out and give me some good access down below and maybe just get the petcock or radiator hose from above took out a 10 millimeter bolt here got that wiring disconnected this fit sits in a slot you just pull it right up and lay it off to the side somewhere but don't look at that that's my engine I'm taking it in and out of my vehicle two times had bad bad luck with the engine rebuilder though he's taking care of me so in that regard I can't complain so we'll do the same anyway with the other side push that tab down that we talked about right there and disconnect the electrical like that Lefty Lucy, righty tighty on all bolts. We got a good look down here, and uh, there's a hose and the pet cock down there, so we can probably point that hose down and uh, start draining it. Or if you choose to, take the clamp off the hose down there with your pliers and take that off. Now, I believe the AC unit is tied to the radiator so we'll need to work on getting that off as well just squeeze that and uh, pull the hose off bucket underneath there before I pull it off though. I have to give it a twist or two to break it loose. Stick a screwdriver in there and pry the hose off. The plastic piece right here was laying on top here. It's got some little push pins. Just kind of pry it out. Pretty basic. Get it out of the way.
to move the radiator hose down there because uh, with the drain, I turned the knob and nothing came out. So it must be plugged up with some debris or something, which does happen. So I took the radiator hose off the bottom there, took the clamp, slid it off, got my coolant jug down there. Now we have some access to this stuff. I believe there's just a 10 millimeter bolt right down in here. Maybe we'll get it with a, a regular wrench. Lefty loosey ready tighty. Same with the other side. Pull this back a little bit and probably get to the bolt down there as well. Just looking at the new radiator. This is where it sits right here. 10 millimeter bolt we're talking about right there and there. And then there's some holes that the uh, condenser sits in down here and down there. So we take these bolts out probably and lift it up a little bit and we can get the radiator out of there. Just use the air ratchet because it's quicker. Get that loose. Now when I was pulling up on the uh, it's probably the uh, transmission cooling system in here and then also the AC condenser. So it's pulling up on that and pushing the bottom of the radiator out. Hope you can see down there. It's got it out of its little hole down there that we talked about earlier on both sides. And now it should theoretically pretty much pull out. I'm going to fight with these AC lines a little bit on the side here probably, but you should be able to weasel it out from there. Kind of worked it most of the way out. This is a tighter fit than I thought. And you might just have to tweak this pipe down here a little bit for the AC. Be careful. You don't want to break things, of course, or put kinks in things, but these AC lines, you should be able to... And there's some free play. You know, bend them just a little bit, tweak them a little bit to get this radiator out. And now it's coming out. We got some new pieces in here for the new radiator. So we'll install these in the right spot. We'll just compare with this radiator. Got the mounts down here. Got the new ones. The two of these that are new. So we can just mount those. And uh, screw clips right there for threading purposes so that's it for your radiator had a pretty good crack in it right here 2001 Dodge van now you need to put in a 50-50 mix of coolant and antifreeze when you're doing radiators and water pumps and stuff 50-50 mix is good uh, if you don't and you use too much water, it can be a problem. You see air bubbles coming out. I think it's going to take about two, two and a half gallons total. And then down there, radiator overflow, I got it filled up to the max level. Just going to kind of keep filling this up till it stops bubbling, I guess. And, uh, I have a video. I'm going to put a link here and show you what happens maybe when you don't have the right mix of uh, antifreeze in your car. And uh, give you a little bit of a headache. So we'll just keep topping this off. And then we want to uh, put a cap on it. Oh, about done there. Put a cap on it and run it for about five minutes. The uh, properly operating vehicle with a good thermostat should start to feel some heat in the vehicle. Put your temperature settings for your heater on hot. Maybe have it blowing out the vents, makes it easier to feel. And you should start feeling some warmth after about five minutes. If you don't, go ahead and shut it off. We'll recheck your radiator fluid level. Might have an air pocket that just burped. And you want to squeeze your radiator hose. You should be able to squeeze it pretty easy before you open the cap. Otherwise, you can always turn it a half a turn. You should notice there's a couple levels on it. When you, feed, when you turn it, so be careful with that. Don't want to burn yourself, but after five minutes, you probably won't burn yourself. And then top it off as needed. 
But if you're getting good heat, you go ahead and keep running it. Take it for a little test drive, watch the temperature gauge. And uh, make sure it gets up to operating temperature. And then when it cools off after a couple, three hours, you want to uh, double check your coolant level. Take the cap off and double check your level here. Make sure it's full and also your coolant overflow bottle. Make sure it's somewhere between low and full or add and full. So, and that's the best way to fill up your vehicle. Now this customer did come in and the vehicle was warm when I did the radiator, so. But you can see the temperature gauge is up a little bit already. Just uh, about three minutes or so, but like I said, he came in with it warm, so it's probably a little warmer than yours may or may not be. So, but we're gonna go for a test drive and uh, watch the gauge and uh, feel for some heat. Although, I do feel a little bit of heat already right now. Just a touch.